now recognize Dr. Baird for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair and Dr. Jacobs. We really uh, appreciate you being here today. My district uh, in, in home is, is home to Purdue University, uh, which administers the Illinois Indiana Sea Grant College Program, and that's in partnership with the University of Illinois. And this Sea Grant is funded through NOAA, and that works on aquatic invasive species uh, and their control pollution prevention and economic opportunity. It also monitors weather and lake conditions using two buoys, uh, which I understand they have their own Twitter account. Is that correct? But anyway, out in Lake Michigan, uh, where real-time data about wind speed, lake temperatures, and wave height is collected and sent to NOAA. So my question, Dr. Jacobs, is how does NOAA strike a budget balance uh, between the internal research that stays stays with NOAA and the extramural research that goes out to NOAA's private and academic partners? So um, in, in the, the tough uh, budget situation we're in, we really had to prioritize uh, maintaining our, our core capabilities of protecting life and property. And, and while the, the Sea Grant program is a fantastic program, um, I'm a huge supporter of it. We have Sea Grants uh, Canals fellows on our on our staff. Um, it was one of the things that we ended up having to cut just to maintain our, our core capabilities. Then my second question in that same same area: uh, Historically, has uh, more extramural research money been provided to universities by NOAA's research office or by their weather service? Uh, typically, the the money for the the research side as well as the cooperative institutes runs through uh, the research side, not the forecast side. So the, the weather service budget uh, was relatively flat. It was the research side. Thank you. Uh, my next question then deals with the, um, the National Integrated Drought Information System. And I think that was reauthorized in December. So, and Congressman Marshall made reference to um, the impact of EPIC on agriculture. So my question deals with, because we have a lot of agriculture in my district, my, my question deals with um, how is this interagency partnership assisting farmers and the agricultural industry across the country? So, EPIC, while originally designed uh, to support NOAA's mission, will actually be the, the transition uh, for model development produced by NASA, uh, DOD, DOE, um, and other agencies. So there, there's going to be a lot of development work uh, running through EPIC by other agencies um, that will ultimately help the medium to long range forecast. So the dynamic model that we're looking at for global forecasting runs out 15 days. Uh, then beyond that, we have two methods for doing seasonal to sub-seasonal forecasting. One is a dynamic model and associated ensembles, as well as statistical models, which look at the dynamical model output and then derive statistical forecast running out nine months. We're looking to extend those possibly beyond 18 months. Thank you. Could you elaborate, though, on the uh, how the National Integrated Drought Information System uh, so, so relates? The, the, the NIDAS reauthorization uh, supports in there was uh, the authorization of EPIC, but also uh, supporting the seasonal to sub-seasonal forecasting as well. And that, and that longer-range forecasting is what the agricultural community is primarily interested in. Thank you, Dr. Jacobs. I yield back my time. Thank you, Dr. Baird.